The Great is Hulu's outrageous period comedy exploring the rise of Catherine the Great a very long time ago and sort of based on actual facts. I'm Rob LaCouria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with the show's creator, Tony McNamara. Tony, The Great is irreverent. It's often very exquisite. It's daring, satirical, and I think it's very funny. It's not a tone we often see with period pieces, period films and series. What inspired this unusual tone and aesthetic? Um, I think originally, originally it was a play, um, and I suppose there was a, a the theatricality and a kind of extremeness that you can get away with in theatre, and now I hope, I think you can get away with it in TV. So, um, and I think for me, I, period stuff was always very polite, and I wasn't a huge fan of politeness. Uh, so I really wanted to tell Catherine the Great story, but I wanted to do it in a way that was fun for me to write and probably hopefully fun for the audience to watch. And that it was also very contemporary. Like I wanted it to be a contemporary story wrapped in a period story so that it was relatable to us rather than we're just looking back at something that happened. It was much more like, oh, that's just like when I married the wrong man and wanted to kill him, things like that, you know. Yeah. So why Catherine the Great? Of all um, historical figures, why did you decide to make this about her and her rise to power? I think because I was interested in um, particularly the the rise to power bit, I suppose, because there was I was really like, how are you, a twenty year old kid who arrives in a country where you don't speak the language, is married off to an idiot, and you're in this political system, and somehow you take the country over and run it for the longest time, and at the same time you do amazing things like you keep the Enlightenment alive, you start women's education, you start science. Yeah. You you bring art, you like invent the roller coaster, and you're also complicated and funny and certainly not perfect. So all of that seemed like a great uh, TV character to me. Yeah, you know, I, how do I put this delicately? Like, I was relieved because period stuff's not necessarily in my wheelhouse, and I was so relieved to be able to be just incredibly entertained by the crazy lunatics of this court. And Catherine has kind of like the surrogate for the audience because she does roll her eyes a bit at the and judges these morons, or as she thinks, um, as the outsider. And I really enjoyed kind of stepping in her shoes. Wasn't it important though to get the right actor to play her? And, and how did you decide to land on Elfani? Yeah, I mean, it's really um, important. I mean, the whole, I mean, it's her story. So she sort of, it's, on, on some level, her show, even though it's an ensemble show. Um, I think it was a hard, like I, I sort of bent my brain trying to think about who could do it and because they had to be funny, but they also had to be a sort of, like even though it's a, there's a sort of comic thrust to the show, there's a narratively it's a drama. So I had to have someone who had dramatic chops but could bring this sort of comic observer status and play with a lot of different people in court because it was a big court and she has a lot of di different dynamics with a lot of characters. Um, so I needed someone who had a lot of range um, and had brought a sort of natural optimism and wonder and curiosity. And I think Al, as a person, has all those characteristics. As an actor, she's just, to, to, you know, she's a great young actor, but she also brings a lot of herself, which is she's a very curious person, she's very funny, um, you know, and she's very, like, strong, you know, she's an incredibly strong 21-year-old, and she's, she's, you know, a kid actor who's grown up with grown-ups, you know, so she's very sort of savvy. At the same time, she retains this sense of wonder about the world. So I think there's so much about the character that I'd written that tied up once I got to know Elle, um, with her and who she was. And, you know, she's a really brave actor who just wants to do interesting things and who's very much a risk taker. So uh, so all of those things just led me to her and, um, you know, and we met and just hit it off immediately and wanted to make, you know, she totally got what I was trying to do and became a real great partner in it. Yeah, um, she, she certainly does uh, give the audience 
a way in. But she's also she also gets to spout a lot of those really acerbic one liners and yeah. you know, quite to take over the kingdom. Where where do those one liners come from? You're I think you've become now quite renowned for that kind of writing. Um, they're very funny and witty, but they're also they can also be quite cutting. Um, do, do you enjoy that aspect of your writing? I think so. I mean, I I sort of like the comic. In writing, I'm always drawn to things that are funny. I'm drawing, I'm drawn to extreme characters in a way. Uh, I don't really, I mean, it's like any writing. It's I don't really plan the one-liners. They just sort of, they really are a character. Like I always think of myself as a character writer, a character-driven writer. So it's very much like, you know, what they say to get what they want, and you know, tonally, that's the tone of the court. It's a tough court. It's a everyone's very smart in some ways, even though they're sort of idiotic and in other ways. So it's just like the tone I settled on was this sort of tough, fast talking toughness, I suppose, and sharpness that everyone has in different versions of it, you know. Um, and that's fun for me to write. And I figured if it's fun for me to write, maybe it'd be fun to watch. Yeah. And like Nicholas Holt gets to. I think probably uh, he probably has the best one liners. He's hysterical as the, I think, idiotic figure. Um, there's yeah. something about him as an actor, though, that is actually quite likable because he's really, he, say, he can say and do really horrible things, but there's something about him. What do you think it is? Because I mean, you've obviously worked with him before, but for this yeah. project, why was he so perfect as Peter? Um, I think I, I'd always thought Peter would be hard to cast and then, um, I remember we were in rehearsal for the favourite, and after a day with Nick, I was I rang Marion, my co-producer, and just said, "I think I found Peter." I think I think because I didn't want Peter to be just a tyrant, like he was a complicated, superficial person, but maybe a complicated person underneath the superficial idiocy. So, and I wanted someone who could get away with a lot and still be liked and still you could still see a lot of elements of him and that, and that's hard and bring a lot of comedy and Nick's so good at comedy, but it is so much. And I think where it comes from is he's such a wonderful person, Nick Holt, and he's such a good guy, you know, and I think there's an element of, even though I think there's an element of that the audience can see. And I think that's what I wanted in the character because I wanted Catherine to be able to see it's sort of the trick that, young charismatic men often play is there's something good about me you just have to go a long way down to get it um and i wanted her to be tricked to some degree by that to the, to think maybe there's something in him that can be got that there is a good person behind all the madness and the kind of idiocy and the violence and the so that their relationship would be complicated and i think nick brings that in a way not many actors do because i think He's, he doesn't, as a young male actor, lead, there's nothing, uh, he doesn't protect himself. There's no ego to Nick in a way. He's a completely adventurous actor who just wants to play with it and have fun with it and he's happy to go as vulnerable as you need him to go and he's happy to go as violent and full on as you need him to go. And he can, he can and all of that comes from a very truthful place. He doesn't really push much he just he's very easy and him and i got on really well straight away and he's just so good with the rhythm of comedy there's a lot of rhythm in my writing that yeah. all the actors all the actors have to get and that's often like and long scenes you know they get five six page two handers um which only work if they can get the rhythm right and he's really really good at the rhythm um you know in and always nailing it and you know carrying you know a lot of that yeah what a relief to um, to find a cast who can do that because the show would just crate up if it doesn't have the right roots, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, casting on this show is, ev is everything because it's a particular tone and it's not, like, easy in a way. Um, so I spent a lot of time casting it. The casting was really methodical um, and I really took a long time. There's a huge amount of... I think everyone else in the show is a theatre actor of the main 11 cast, there's strong English theatre actors, Australian, Belinda's Australian. Um, so people have got a long theatre background and are really like on language and on the truth of a character being what drives them and then let the script tell them, take them if it's dramatic, take them if it's comic, 
but just play the truth all the time, don't reach for the comedy. But they always know, they have the comic instinct, so they always know where it is. Um, yeah. So it took, a, took us a long, took us a couple of months to cast it because we were very particular about making sure they were a in really strong ensemble without any weak links. Yeah. You know, I thought it was really fascinating. I didn't know this, that your work on The Great kind of inspired and led you to co-writing the screenplay for The Favourite. Can you talk us through how that worked out? Yeah, I mean, basically, like, um, Yorgos had got the project and was looking uh, for a new writer and because um, he sort of liked, he liked the story, he didn't like what it was, and then he would read The Great. He was reading things in London and then he couldn't find anyone and then he read The Great and another thing I'd written and, uh, you know, rang up and, you know, I didn't, you know, he hadn't made, so he hadn't made um, Lobster or anything. He'd just moved to London. Um, and then, you know, we just got on and I, I was, he was like, it sort of wasn't dissimilar to what was in his head. So then I said, this is what I do to the script. And then from there, he and I just uh, took it and worked, worked on it for, God, four or five or six years, I think, by the time we, um, but by the time it got shot, he'd made Lobster and he'd made Sacred Deer and, uh, but it was an expensive movie and so it took us a while to get to the point where um, he could get that kind of money to make a movie. But, um, yeah, it, it, it's kind of worked like that, but he read The Great and then he and I kind of took, up, took off and, and, you know, that was a great collaboration. People don't realise how long it takes to get a project off the ground. Like with The Great, you wrote that well before The Favourite. The Favourite took a long time to kind of lift off. Yeah. And yet the, the Great is now only going to start premiering on Hulu in a couple of weeks. Like what challenges do you face on a show like The Great? It's Was it difficult, obviously, because it's so lavish and, you know, there's a lot of period pieces to it. How difficult was it to get it off the ground? It was, it was sort of strange because it was, well, I mean, because, yeah, they usually most things take a long time. I mean, features particularly, I guess. But um, this one was not too bad. I mean, I kind of had thought about it being a feature for a long time and I dabbled in that, but I was never happy with the time frame. And then I was running a shows at the time in Australia. So I just went, I'd met Nick and I knew Al. And so I was just like, oh, TV, I know who can do it. I knew they could do it. And then I was happy to, and then I just wrote the pilot quite quickly off the play um, and then we just took it out and we were quite lucky it happened quite quickly and Hulu really got it and commissioned a pilot off the script straight away um, so we were shooting it pretty um, fast from pitch to I mean pretty fast like from by writing the pilot getting the pitch that took five or six months and then we were shooting if that was the start of the year and by the end of the year we were shooting the pilot and then they, you know, we cut that and then you wait for the green light, which happened quite quickly, thankfully. And then, um, you know, but I guess from writing the pilot to now is two and a half, two and a half years or something, I suppose, which is probably reasonably quick. Um, yeah. And, you know, we were just, I mean, what was good was Hulu were just all in. They just were like, this is different. This is something. And it was a big show, so it, an expensive show. So there was sort of like, but they really were like, we love it. We think it's something very unique. So that's what we want. And so they're all in and totally supportive the whole way through. So, you know, yeah. they were a great partner. Yeah. Well, it's really unique. Um, the only, like, I guess there are some similarities with The Favourite in terms of its tone. Um, but speaking of The Favourite, you know, when um, Aussies, fellow Aussies get nominated at the Academy Awards, I get this weird parochialism that over overwhelms me. And so I remember when you were nominated a couple of years ago, I thought, oh, you know, this is fantastic. You're such a great writer. You've written for some of my favourite shows ever, like The Secret Life of Us and Love My Way and Doctor Doctor. Um, so I was really, it was really cool that you got nominated. I'm wondering what it was like on that morning off. I guess for us it would have been in the middle of the night. When you found out you were nominated, can you take us back to that moment and how you felt? Uh, yeah, I was actually in London. Um, I was in London editing the pilot of The Great. Um, and um, I, I, it was sort of weird because, I mean, we were on this deadline to deliver the pilot, and but I knew it was happening, but I was also like, I can't listen to it um, <laughs> that pretty much. Um, so my I was in the cutting room trying to pretend it wasn't happening. <laughs> and then 
um, my assistant sort of was listening and then she sort of ran in and goes and told me and then and then it was great. I mean, it was so great because we were lucky that so many of us got nominated. So um, so then, you know, I rang Yorgos and then, you know, uh, Robbie Ryan and Fiona Crombie and other Aussie and so we all just went out for dinner and, you know, were like, how great is that? <laughs> that was quite surreal. But uh, especially I think for Yorgos and I because it had been such a long process that um, to get it to that point was quite amazing. Yeah, and then obviously the, the night of the Oscars was was obviously a, a, an amazing excitement when Olivia won that yeah, Best Actress that Prize. Was, yeah. Best Prize. Can you, what was, was it a really fun night? Was it unforgettable for you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it was, yeah, because it's surreal because you just like, you're like, am I sitting behind the Coen brothers? And, um, <laughs> you know, people you idolise, Jeff Bridges and, you know, um, and so it was fun and it was also fun because, I think for the fa for us, the favourite, you know, we were all together for a long period of those festivals and award shows and and I think that was really fun as for everybody because it was like a little rolling party for a couple of months and that was sort of the last party. Um, so, um, so it was fun and I think when Olivia won, everyone was just, because she's just the nicest person in the world and a great actor and I think it was a sort of this you know, amazing moment for everybody that she won that. Yeah, it absolutely was an unforgettable moment at the Oscars. Mate, good luck on the great premiere soon on Hulu. It's, it's really funny and hopefully we'll see you on the Emmy maybe red carpet in a few months' time. Um, and thanks for your time. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rob. No worries. Now, everybody, while you're at home and you're socially distancing, go to Gold Derby and make your predictions and make sure you click subscribe because we've got heaps of chats with lots of contenders just like today. Thank you.